Good morning, everyone. Today's topic is connectors in fixed partial linear. I am Dr. Arya Sugumaran, senior lecturer from the Department of Prosthodontics. As we all know, there are three components for fixed partial linear. That is a pontic, a retainer, and a connector. What is a pontic? It is a part of fixed partial linear which replaces the missing natural tooth. And what is a retainer? It is that part which gets attached to the abutment tooth. And what is a connector? As the name suggests, it connects two components together. That is, in case of fixed partial denture, it unites pontic and retainer together to form a single unit. By definition, according to Rosenstiel, connectors are the components of a fixed partial denture or splint that join the individual retainers and pontics together. And according to GPT-9, connector is the portion of a fixed partial denture that unites the retainer and pontic. These definitions are important for your exam. Please note it down. Moving to the classification, connectors are classified into rigid connectors and non-rigid connectors. This is based on the ability to move or the movement permissible between the a retainer and the pontic. That is, in case of rigid connectors, there is no movement allowed between retainer and the pontic. Examples of rigid connectors are cast connectors, soldered connectors, and loop connector. And in case of non-rigid connector, there is a slight movement of there is a slight amount of movement permissible between retainer and connector. Examples are tenon mortis connector split pontic connector and cross pin and wing connector. Now, what are the principles to be followed to design a connector? Whatever procedures we do in prosthetic dentistry, we have to follow certain principles for the longevity of processes which we are fabricating. Same applies to connectors also, because under masticatory load, the maximum stress are getting concentrated onto the connector. So the size, shape, position, all of these factors will influence the success of the processes. So we should know about the type of connector being used, size of the connector, shape of the connector for determining the success and failure of a processes. Type of connectors, as I have already said, there are two types of connector, rigid connector and non-rigid connector. The indication contraindication of these two connectors will be discussed later in detail. Next is the size of connector. Size of connector is important in maintaining the periodontal health of the abutment tooth. It must be sufficiently large to prevent fracture or distortion during function, but it should not be too large because it will interfere with effective plaque control. If there is no effective plaque control, it might contribute to periodontal health issues. So it must be sufficiently large to prevent fracture during function and it should not be too large because it might hamper oral hygiene maintenance. Next, shape of connector. Connectors should have a concave shape mesodistally. That is, there should be a smooth transition from one component to the other to accommodate the gingiva. And the shape uh, should be in the form of meniscus and it should be convex buccolingually. For anterior teeth, connector should be placed slightly lingually and use of large connector or inappropriately shaped connector result in display of metal over time leading to aesthetic failure of FPD. So in an anterior tooth, the connector should be placed slightly lingually for aesthetic reason. Next, we'll go to the classification. That is, first is rigid connector. As I have already said, rigid connectors do not allow any movement and it is indicated when entire masticatory load can be transferred onto the abutments. Rigid connectors between pontics are the preferred way of fabricating most fixed partial denture as they provide desirable strength and durability to the processes. We are more accustomed to the use of rigid connectors in clinical practice since its placement requires only minimal technical, labor, technical and laboratory expertise. So in daily pra clinical practice, this is the type of connector which we are using commonly. 
This can be fabricated in two ways. That is, it can be casted directly as a part of multi-unit FPD, or it can be made as different units and it can, and can be joined by means of a solder material. These are the ways to fabricate a rigid connector. Based upon that, it is classified into cast connectors, soldered connectors, and loop connectors. Cast connectors. In this type of connector design, a um, wax pattern is fabricated first. That is, this connector design is shaped in wax as a part of multi-unit wax pattern. The advantage of this type of uh, connector design is it is convenient and minimum laboratory procedures are required for this. But the problem with this type of connector is there is a chance of distortion of wax pattern while transferring this wax pattern to casting procedures. That is one disadvantage. Another disadvantage is there is limited access, there is only limited access to the proximal surface for prepare, while preparing wax pattern. These are the two disadvantages of this type of cast connector. But it has advantage, it, it has got an advantage that it is convenient and only minimum laboratory procedure is only required for this type of cast connectors. Next is soldered connector. In soldered connector, an intermediate metal alloy is used as a filler material between two metal components. For that, a wax pattern should be made first. Then it is sectioned with the help of a ribbon saw. Why we are sectioning it? Because after casting of the components, the surfaces should be to be joined should be flat and parallel. And it should be at a controlled distance apart. This will allow adequate uh, soldering with minimum distortion. One more thing to be noted is soldering gap width. In this picture, you, you can see that a gap width of, a minimum gap width is there between two metal components. And ideally, about 0.25 millimeter gap width is allowed to reduce the inaccuracy because if there is a increase if there is an increase in soldering gap width it will cause inaccuracy hence an ideal gap should be maintained that's about soldered connectors next is loop connector loop connectors are indicated in case of midline diastema for aesthetic reasons that is to maintain the existing diastema we are providing a loop. It consists of a loop in the lingual aspect. Now, what are the advantages of rigid connectors? It is easy to fabricate. Less armamentarium is required. It's only required. Less time consuming. Now, the question is, can we use rigid connectors in all the cases? What if there is a long span edangelousness? Or what if there is a fire abutment or a tilted abutment? In such cases, a stress bearing mechanism is essential to reduce the transmission of stress to the abutment tooth. In such cases, what we recommend is the use of a non-rigid connector. Non-rigid connectors are indicated if it is not possible to prepare two abutments for FPD with a common path of placement or in case of fire abutment in which there is a fulcrum like situation that can cause the weakest of the terminal abutment to fail and may cause intrusion of the fire abutment. So in such situation we, we will use a non-rigid connector. What is a fire abutment? Fire, fire abutment is an intermediate abutment which has edangelousness or edangelous space on both sides. If a long span exposed processes is given on this, it will create a huge stress on terminal abutment. And fire abutment will act like a fulcrum, which will lead to the failure of processes. So in this type of situation, we can use a non-rigid connector. There are various examples for non-rigid connectors. First is tenon mortise connector. 
split bonding connector, cross pin and wing connector. We'll see each one of these in detail. First is tenon mortise connector. This is indicated in, in a situation of fire abutment. That is, it has two components, tenon, which is a male component, which is attached to the pontic, and mortis, which is a female component, which is attached to the retainer. And their alignment must be parallel to the path of placement. First, the female component, that is the mortis, is at attached first, and then the male component. And under occlusal load, slight movement between these two components will help in reducing the stress transfer to the abutment tooth. That is the mechanism behind this, non, this type of non-rigid connector. Next is cross pin and wing connector. Here, it is, all, it is used in case of tilted abutment. That is, wing is attached to the distal retainer, which is cemented first, and retainer pontic segment is seated next. So the mechanism is the same as that of tenon mortis connector, that is slight movement between these two components under occlusal load will help in dissipating stresses to the abutment tooth, will help in reducing the stress transfer to the abutment tooth. Next is split pontic connector. Here the pontic is splitted into two halves, a mesial half and a distal half. A key is incorporated into the mesial half and a keyway is incorporated to the distal half. And both of these components will get engaged together when FPD is seated in final position. So these are the examples for non-rigid connectors. That is split pontic connector, cross pin and wing connector, and tenon mortis connector. To summarize, connectors are classified into rigid connectors and non-rigid connectors. The examples for rigid connectors are cards connector, soldered connector, and loop connector. Rigid connectors are indicated to unite retainers and pontic in a fixed fixed partial danger used when entire load on the pontic is to be transferred directly to the abutment. It is contraindicated in case of tilted abutment and in abutments with differing long axis in long span bridges. Next is non-rigid connector. The examples of non-rigid connector are tenon mortis connector, split pontic connector, and cross pin and wing connector. It is indicated to relieve stress to accommodate malaligned fixed partial danger abutments and also in case of fire abutments. It is contraindicated in short irregular spaces. It is not indicated. And if the patient is not willing for extensive tooth preparation, because it is slightly expensive also, in such situation, it is not indicated. That's all about uh, connectors used in fixed partial danger. Thank you. Have a good day.